Hello, Internet. It's me, Thick Beef, and I've had a couple breakthroughs since I made my last theory about our Lord and Savior Winkle, which I've deleted because it's garbage. So that's why I'm here, to remake the old theory about cooking with Winkle. But before I go on, I know at least one of you hasn't seen the original masterpiece of film, so you should go to Tax MK's channel. He made the series, and he's a really good guy, and if it weren't for him... I wouldn't be here making this, so go give him a sub. But anyway, ass padding aside, let's jump right into it. Okay, I'm gonna explain things because I have a feeling that at least one of you isn't gonna go watch it. Even though I told you that I go to tax this channel, you're still not gonna. Okay, fair enough. I'll explain it to you. Basically, there's a fella named Winkle, and he's the best chef in the whole damn world. Winkle then finds out that he has a number one fan, so he decides to kidnap them to be on the show. And, you know, I'm not one to question ethics, but things have definitely escalated quickly. And we're only on episode two, so let's keep this train rolling. Then Winkle kind of just goes around town, pimping and not simping while making food, evading the police, going to haunted restaurants, you know, all the good places like Ferdinand von Bernard's. And in the next installment, Winkle is apparently going to be hunted by these nice fellows over here. But thick, there can't be any lore. It's just a series about a guy called Winkle making food. First off, I'm flattered, but don't call me thick. Second, you're probably right. I mean, it's not like there's a statement or something from the creator that could possibly discombobulate your statement. It's not a part of the uh, Cooking with Winkle metaverse, if you will. So, uh, there's no lore in this video. Thought wrong, bitch. Of course there's lore in Cooking with Winkle. What are you, an idiot, you brainlet? So, let's talk about the lore that I've gathered. I've combed through the series over 12 times. I've spent the months thinking about the complex story of Cooking with Winkle. I've looked at all the evidence, gathered all the resources I needed. I've even been referencing all the small details I noticed while going frame by frame. And after all of that, after all this time of planning, I have a theory. I have a theory that Winkle isn't just any ordinary guy. I don't think he's even a mortal. I think that Winkle is a god. Now, that may sound familiar, especially from a couple months back, but just, just stick with me for a minute, all right? Just, just have a little faith, all right? So, we see that Winkle can just teleport away from the police. It's shown a lot in this episode, which I definitely remembered. Also, when he's bringing Goofy into the sewers, he also just kind of appears. That one is a little more wishy-washy, but, you know, just go with it, man. And, I mean, just look at Winkle. What mortal is that handsome? Just look at him. But, you know, I decided to do some actual research. So, after 15 minutes on Wikipedia, I found that this god best fit the description of Winkle. Janus, the Greek god. Let me quote Wikipedia for a minute. The god of beginnings, gates, transitions, time, duality, doorways, passages, frames, and the key to all endings. I think that fits the bill pretty well. A little vague, but you know, what god isn't? And um, just a little final nugget of information here to help seal the deal. Um, Janus is the descendant of the Greek god of cooking. Hmm. That sounds like it could be an important connection. Perhaps because, you know, Winkle's a chef. This is, it's all coming together, guys. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it's all coming together. Oof. Sorry about that. I got a little carried away. But, you know, I thought I needed some more evidence, you know? A direct source, if you will. I was going to DM the creator himself, the almighty Tax MK, but I chickened out because, you know, nervousness, obviously. And then I tried to find Winkle since, you know, gathered all this evidence. But after all this research, I'm like 97% sure he lives on the moon, and that's a little far out of my budget. So I don't think that option is possible. So after a sl long sleep-deprived night, I was looking through the credits of episode 5, and then I recognized someone. Someone I knew. Someone who has made direct contact with Winkle. Someone who might be able to confirm my theory's suspicions. 
Someone who could help me find Winkle himself. So I should probably go check on him. I've had him locked in my basement ever since I found out. It's been only like a month. He should be fine, right? Yeah, let's go check on him. Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. You left me in here for two days, dickhead. Fuck you, by the way. What do you mean? I left you a Nutrigrain bar. Yeah, a raspberry Nutrigrain bar. I am, I, I, I am so sorry. I, I didn't realize. Eh, it's all good, man. What do you know about Winkle? Who is he? I need answers. Well, sir, Winkle is Winkle. Simple. Look, just cut the bullshit, coffee man. Tell me the answers. Sir, I'm a simple man. I've got some femoid thighs waiting at home for me, so if you could untie me before I bash your skull in, that would be just fantastic, alright? I'm already missing a new episode of Dragon Ball. Answer my questions, Coffee, and you're free to go. I don't want to have to steal your ankles. Well, how about we compromise, good sir? Go on, then. I'm listening. Well, how about we work together to hunt Winkle and get the answers ourselves? A gentleman's agreement, then? Let's shake on it. Indeed, my friend. Let's find this son of a bitch. And then the two friends wandered off into the sunset with a sniper rifle and a box of grenades to kill some Dumbus called Tablet Maniacs and maybe find Winkle and ask him the secrets of the universe. And if Winkle liked mac and cheese, 